evening and welcome to the pastor's study at Faith Community Church in Geneva. Tonight I'm going to be speaking out of Acts chapter 12, if you want to turn your Bibles there. And it's a story that Pastor Kevin and I were just laughing about because it is so real as far as being human and identifying these different truths that are through this chapter. And so as I talk about it, I want you to think, oh yeah, I understand that for my life, or oh, I see that for somebody else's life. And so I'm following the idea of uh, Peter and the Great Escape. Uh, I'm going to call it, refer to Paul Newman and uh, the Great Escape, but this is uh, Peter and the Great Escape, or Peter and the uh, Outstanding Miraculous Escape. Uh, the byline would be, uh, I told Kevin that the byline would be Rhoda, uh, the airhead, but to be nice, because <laughs> I'm a pastor, I'll say Rhoda, the amazed, and but it's real in our life. And so what we have in Acts chapter 12, we have Herod, the king, is executing Christians, and he kills James, the brother of John. He's putting other Christians to death. He has Peter in the prison, and Peter's real popular already. He's gaining popularity, so he puts chains on Peter. He puts double guards on him, a, a soldier chained to each side of him, a soldiers chained, uh, assigned to different doors on uh, exiting the prison. And so that's the scene. Peter is about to be executed, and Herod is waiting for Easter or the Passover uh, because he get everybody excited, and then uh, they wanted the Pharisees wanted Peter killed because he was getting too popular uh, because of the miracles and the life he was ministering uh, through Jesus Christ. So in verse 5, uh, this is Acts chapter 12, verse 5, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing, by the church unto God for him. That's a real key there. When people are in prison, now this can be a physical prison, an emotional prison, uh, a relational prison, a sickness, uh, uh, it could be a hospital, feel like you're in prison, or uh, you might even have this COVID-19, feel like you're in prison. But the church continued in prayer. And because of that, the miracles that are going to happen occurred. So church, Get together and pray. That prayer line, we don't take that lightly. Get together and pray. God listens to his church when they pray. Verse 6, And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping, between two soldiers bound with chains, the keepers before the door kept the prison. Behold, an angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shone in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly, and his chains fell off from his hands. So now you have, not only is in prison with different guards, he's chained to guards, chains on him, and an angel appears, which tells you there is no circumstance in your life, no matter how, how, how unpopular, no matter how impossible it could be, that an angel of God or the Holy Spirit of God, that Jesus can't appear and nudge you and say, Hey, I'm here with you. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And he did so. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him and knew not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. Okay, now you got to realize, Peter knows he's dying. He's going to die in the next day or two. His friends have already died. Other believers have already died. Others have already been persecuted. It's an impossible situation. So he's just waiting. You know, he's saying his goodbyes in his head. He's probably written some letters, and, and he knows it's his time. And an angel of the Lord comes. God arrives at the scene, nudges, and he said, This must be a dream because I'm already psychologically accepting the situation. Obviously, physically, he's accepting the situation. But an angel of the Lord appears. Verse 10. And they were past the first and second guard. They came into the iron gate that leads to the city. So the irons fell off Peter around his waist and his wrist. They fell off the guards that were asleep, knocked out by the Holy Spirit. They go through the different doors, guarded by guards. So otherwise, how many layers of impossibility are in your life? How many layers of impossibility are in someone's that you love in their life? And you look at it and you say, there is no possibility. Uh, he's all but dead. 
And he went out and passed on through the street, and immediately the angel departed from him. So many times in our life we need to realize when it's impossible and God appears, God ministers, God speaks, it's like, really? I mean, it's, it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm ready to die. I, I, I'm captivated. I'm a prisoner. And all of a sudden God has set me free. Now, do I believe this or not? Or do I go back into the situation and rehash it so much that I put myself back into prison? No, he, now he's dumbfounded. He's out at night, and you have to realize he's hunted. He's going to be killed. He's going to be executed. He's tiptoeing through the town. He's trying to find out where the Christians are meeting tonight. He's thinking, if they hear me, and I imagine every sound he heard, he would jump. How about dogs barking in the side street? How about somebody talking over on the other other building or other? How about somebody? And you think, is, or, is that them? Have they found me? Am I going to die? Am I going to go back into the situation that I was? Verse eleven. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, "Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent His angel." Otherwise, reality. Praise God. I have the Word of God. I've got the presence of God. I am set free. You need to know that because the old way of thinking will put you right back into prison. But when God speaks, and he can speak to you out of the word of God when you're reading it one day. He can speak to you while you're taking a shower. A word of knowledge comes to you. Or you're driving this down the street and all of a sudden a word comes to you. That word is more important and more powerful and more real than the prison that you were in. Because that is of God, and the prisons we have are of mankind. So know that. When God speaks, it's out of the realm of possibility, and it becomes possible in your life. I like verse 11. And when Peter has come to himself, now I know for a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and delivered me out of the hand of Herod from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. God has delivered me from all the natural expectation, all the natural setting. You've got to have God for this to happen. He has delivered me from all expectation. What is our natural inclination, our natural expectation when so many bad things happen in our life? Or we can hear God and be delivered from natural expectation. Verse 12. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Hello, there's the church praying together. There are the families, the friends of each other. They're praying together for a release for Peter, for a salvation of Peter. Maybe there'll be a stay and he won't be executed for a week or two. Maybe there'll be a stay and Herod will change his mind, just leave him in prison. Maybe there'll be... They were together praying, and when we pray, we're bringing down the will of God in our life. It's not our will, our expectation, or what we think can happen, but God's. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, I love this verse, I love this verse. And Peter knocked at the door of the gate. Now he's watching, he's listening, it's dark, he's knocking quietly. He doesn't want guards or soldiers or somebody to turn him in. He knocked at the gate, a maid came to hearken named Rhoda. Okay, who's there? Who's there? Verse 14, And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood at the gate. Can, can you imagine that? Rhoda, Rhoda, let me in. <laughs> it's Peter. Is that you, Peter? It's me. Open the door. Peter, Peter we've been praying for you. Peter. Shh, shh, Rhoda, quiet. Open the door. Whoa! She runs in. Now, see, can you just see this airhead? <laughs> or, no. Can you just see this amazed person it's like whoa we were praying for it now, now catch this but we didn't really believe it would happen mm -hmm. not that way i mean we we're praying for a little miracle maybe he would live a, another week we we're praying for a little miracle maybe he would stay in prison and die in there we we're praying for you know our expectation herod has already killed all these other people of course peter's next we were praying for a miracle but not that big of a miracle, not that fantastic of a miracle. When you pray, what do you visualize? What can you visualize that God can't do? What can you visualize to take you from being perplexed and being what, what's going to happen? You know it's going to, you see it, and God says, no, 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 I'm not limited to that. Look what I have to offer. 
in your life. Now, when she knew it was Peter's voice, she opened up the gate because she was glad, verse 15, and they said unto her, Thou art mad. Now, now here's the rest of them, okay? The rest of them that, that, that are, are amazed. And she said, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed, No, no, it, it's Peter. He's at the door. Then they said, It's his angel. You know? <laughs> Thank God for supernatural. But why do we always have to go religion? It's his angel. It's a God. No, it's reality. God in reality. God in time and space. And it wasn't his angel. It was him. Verse 16. But Peter continued knocking at the door. When they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Now, while Peter keeps knocking at the door, I wonder what's going through his head. I really do wonder what's he... You know, Peter was brash. Peter was, you know, he's the mouth. He's the one that whacks off ears with swords. He's the one that he'll kill them all. He'll stand for Jesus Christ. And, and you're knocking at the door, and I know you know I'm out here. Hello? <laughs> the others finally catch on, and they, you can hear, they'll just run and open the door. Who, who's there? For the umpteenth time, it's me, Peter. I mean, can, this is real stuff. And if you don't hurry up, we're all going to be killed. <laughs> They were so astonished, they opened the door. 17. But he, beckoning unto them with a hand to hold their peace, because they started rejoicing and clapping and praise God and hallelujah. Shh, shh, be quiet. Let's go inside and shut the door. They're going to kill me. You, you get it? I mean, but now they're excited. The Lord had brought him out of the prison, and he said, Go show these things to James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Now, as soon as it was day, there's no st small stir among the soldiers. Okay, Peter's going to show himself to the other believers now, okay? So thank God for all of that. But now let's switch back to this natural situation, Herod and the soldiers. No small stir among the soldiers concerning what became of Peter. And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea and Caesarea and their abode. Otherwise, Herod was so angry, he killed everybody involved. Well, tough. You don't want to believe God? Suffer. Do you see? The, it, it's just amazed. It's, it's just amazing what God can do in our lives. And so we take a natural situation that we feel imprisoned. And I'm talking about true affliction. I'm talking about true trials. I'm talking about failures in our life. I'm talking about, no, Jesus doesn't always hip, hip. Hooray, he wins in every situation. It appears. But in the long run, as we continue to pray and keep our faith in God and have brothers and sisters praying for us, God intervenes in such a way, it's like, whoa. It's like, I thought that was all over. I thought we could never, I thought that, you know, <clears throat> God is not limited to our expectation. And so we need to realize, <clears throat> I've been talking about cataphatic and apophatic cataphatic is that little box it's absolutely what who you are it's your essence it's what you believe what you've experienced i'm talking about the good the bad the different everything about god so let's just leave it on god for a moment everything you've heard about god everything that's built all the scriptures that you know everything that's good about god and you say okay god i believe that and then here comes this imprisoned situation, and all of a sudden, now that has moved into your box, and, and that's all you can see. That's a natural response. Peter's in prison, they're going to kill him. Let's just pray, you know, something happens. Then God, apophatic, God is outside of your box. God is outside of the situation. Herod wasn't in control of his army. Herod wasn't in control of Jerusalem. or He, he wasn't in control of any of that. God was in control. Just as Herod's not in control, the world, the flesh, the devil is not in control in your life, even though that's where we have to live, in the world, but not of the world, because as we pray to God and hear God, there's the key, pray till we hear God. Pray with other believers that will believe for you. Don't get, don't get around prisoner, other Christians will say, well, uh, you know, everybody has to die at some time. And, and by the way, you know, he was talking out of line. And, and, and you know, Herod does have his authority. And no, no, don't, don't. Get away from Christians that, that have weak faith. 
stay with Christians and find Christians who will say, well, you believe with me because I heard a word of God. And they were praying, I see God. And I believe God is outside of our box. He's outside of Peter's box, Herod's box, even the Christian church that was praying. He's outside of their box. Apophatic is everything else God can do. People, where it's real fun to live is out here in the unknown, out here in the spooky and the scary and the, oh, my God. So on today's news that a black hole hit something, and scientists are amazed. Now i got a question, how can a hole hit something? But, hey, I don't know. They're amazed. God is out there. God is beyond our life and our situation Pray until we hear God and believe God. So in our life, understand, God is not limited to your chains. God is not limited to doors that have been shut in your face. God is not limited to the government. Thank God he's not limited to our United States of America government right now. God's not limited in your situation. So believe in God. Believe in a God of miracles. Believe in praying together. And here's, here's, here's the fun part. Believe in the answers. God loves you. God's got greatness for you. God brings you out of every situation. As we hear God, believe God, and watch God work in your life. So I pray this blessing on you tonight. That you'll know Jesus Christ. You'll know the Word of God. You'll know the voice of God. And watch God in your life. Amen.